Welcome to the Common Humanity Podcast, where we're here to have real human conversations. Today, I am joined by an old friend, Kaylee, who used to volunteer referee for me uh, for youth sports. And that is how I know her and have just kept track <laughs> of her over the course of her life moving on elsewhere and doing other things. And she's doing some fun, great things in her life. And I'm going to let her tell you a little bit more about that. But my first question for you, Kaylee, is who are you? Okay. Um, so, like you said, um, we've met, I don't even remember the year we met. It was a while ago. Um, definitely more than five years ago. Yeah. Um, but it, I was active duty stationed in Wyoming. I'm originally from Massachusetts. So I was definitely out of my comfort zone over there. <laughs> Um, so it was nice, like, meeting you that way. Um, but I'm an Air Force veteran. Um, I'm a wife and soon-to-be mom. So I'm, like, 21 weeks pregnant right now. So that's definitely a new chapter of my life that I'm kind of diving into. Um, but I got out of active duty, um, I think I'll be coming up on, like, two years now. Been to different places, done a lot of things, um, learned a lot of stuff. But I was just ready to settle down and kind of do my thing and have a better, like, family life. Because the military is, like, super hard um, to do that with. Especially, like, moving around all the time and doing all that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm a life insurance broker. Um, so I have my license with that. I recently got um, certified as a as a life coach as well. So starting some businesses on the side of working full time. Um, I live in New Hampshire now, um, which is nice because I'm close enough to family, but far enough from family, oh. if that makes sense. <laughs> oh, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> yeah, right. So, um, but it's nice being back home and, and with them because I was active duty for uh, eight years and uh, missed out on a lot of things. So happy to be here and kind of live that life now. Nice. Um, what, what made you decide to pursue life coaching? So life coaching for me, I actually, I don't know if a lot of people even really know much about it. Um, cause a lot of people I've talked to like, yeah, I'm doing this. They're like, what is, what is that? Right. So a lot of people don't even really know about it. And I was one of those people actually. Um, so it started off by, um, I actually really follow um, some motivational speakers like all throughout my career and that have really like helped me go on. Um, I'm sure a lot of people know Eric Thomas. Um, he's a big one for me. So I kind of jumped on one of his things that ended up leading me into a life coach through him. So I got my own life coach um, and I did, I think, I think it was like six different sessions with him, um, which was great because I have a lot of great ideas. I've been pretty successful in life, but I'm like very, uh, I can be like kind of scatterbrained and like, it's hard to like focus on one thing at a time where I kind of wanted to see like my full potential type thing. And, mm -hmm. and that's where I was going with it. Keep me motivated as well. Um, so I got into that and he actually recommended me a book. Um, and it's, it's by Jay Shetty and, um, he has a school and everything for life coaching and the book was just life-changing um so that was kind of how I got it what's the book called um things like a monk oh okay yeah yep super good book I love it yeah I <clears throat> I don't know if I I don't know if in in the in any of this that you saw that I am also a certified life coach I don't really practice as a life coach but I went into it with the the idea of getting that knowledge um because I'm a firm believer that education is more than what you plan to use it for if that makes sense 100%. yeah 100 I mean I grew even if I don't go like crazy far and like take this business really far with yeah. life coaching which I want to right of course everybody wants to but yeah it was, it was definitely something like I grew so much as a person, just person, just like learning 
about life coaching and I implemented a lot of those things which was it's been fantastic yeah and I think there are so many so many opportunities for the things that you can learn when you're learning to be a life coach you can implement not just in your day-to-day life but like in how you express yourself to the world around you and how you talk to people um I don't know if you guys had a class on asking why or not, but like, (laughs) I'm one of like, apparently like the 1% of people who doesn't get automatically offended when somebody says why, because I'm like, I ask myself why all day, every day. I'm like, why is this happening? Why is this? Like, I think it's like the engineer brain of mine. Um, (laughs) Whereas other people are like, you have to re reframe that sentence into like, how is that? impacting your life what about that thing is bringing up those kind like those thoughts or those feelings like and just learning that the way I see the world is not the way everybody sees the world and then so I changed the way I talk to people and that whether I use that in a business sense or not it has impacted my relationships it's impacted my ability to like work with other people at a job things like that and so it's one of those things I find super fascinating because it there's so much about it that is like how humans work Mm -hmm. how we think how we feel how to motivate humans to be their best selves and it makes me happy that there's so many opportunities for people to have life coaches because there's more and more life coaches for specific things. I'm going to ask you in a second what your like focus is. Um, <laughs> but, like there's life coaches for specific things when you need help with something. There's life coaches um, like if you are moving someplace, there are people who coach you on like that the ability to uproot and like replant yourself somewhere because that's a hard thing to do. Um, Relationship coaches, like there's so much opportunity out there for people to find someone to help them live their best life. So I think it's fantastic that you found that route and are putting yourself out there to help people. So what, in what way did you like, I don't know if you've narrowed it down to one specific thing or um but what is your like focus on that you want to help people with primarily so honestly that was the hardest part of becoming a life coach it was like I want to help everybody and the way that like the school I went through um everything they teach you within that school um you can really apply it to any situation right Right. So like anybody can come to me and have with a problem or goals or whatever, and I can apply everything I've learned to every single situation and and, and get them results. So that's why I was like, if I narrow it down, am I gonna, you know, lose out on helping some, some people, but, um, they teach you, you know, you gotta, you gotta find the right audience that's like for you and like, where are you going to make the most, like the biggest impacts and stuff like that. Um, so I'm still narrowing um trying to decide what I really love um but mainly um it's like self-growth you know creating like you know this tough resilient mindset um getting out of your comfort zone kind of like breaking those boundaries um of like mental like stagnancy like reaching those goals you like really they just seem so far away and they're really not right and if you have that person that can just kind of give you a little boost or help you from you know change a little each day to to get closer and faster you know what I mean um so I have that but um interestingly enough my husband I drag him along on all my crazy ideas um but he actually he got interested in it as well and he we went to the same school during the same time um so 
he has his kind of stuff that he's interested in. Um, so he has a little bit more of, you know, some specific stuff. So we really can help a lot of people. Um, but a big one is, it is like you talked about, like with moving and stuff, um, it's military transitioning is, is a big part of what we're looking to do. Um, just because we've both, in, he's been in the military um, longer than I have, but when we got out, <laughs> no matter, um, you know, you go to TAPS or whatever kind of stuff they try to help you like with leaving, it's not what you think it is. And it's really, really difficult. Like we both found ourselves um, kind of struggling to be real, like really honest, like it was hard. You leave a community. Um, you kind of don't really know your like purpose anymore. It's weird, you know, like you're mission based. And of course, depending on what job you are in the military can can also determine what how that is after too for you. But, you know, even just dealing with simple things like we had to make sure we had jobs for you know, insurance and stuff like that. You don't have to worry about those things in the military. Um, but it is definitely like a, a big mental struggle that I think a lot of vets struggle with. And we also, a lot of the vets, like nobody goes and, and gets help, right? And that's, it's a stigma, um, especially if you're even like just law enforcement, never mind just veterans, like law enforcement, um, just any public service and stuff. You, you, it's really hard to say, hey, I need help because the stigma is you can lose your job, you can lose your, your gun or your badge or, you know, things are just going to change. You can get kicked out of the military, right? So a lot of people don't do that. Um, so we kind of want to be that bridge of not mental health, you know, but still helping people along the way and be that in between of there's no stigma here it's just a life coach but still like really help them with all their stuff that you know they're dealing with which is also another broad topic because it can be many different things right yeah. um but really just helping them and hopefully maybe help the the veteran homelessness and suicide that we see all the time but I mean those are big dreams big goals <laughs> And it's really hard to get that kind of community to be like, hey, I'll do it. But hopefully hey. people, you know, feel comfortable and we can establish ourselves where it can be kind of a normal thing, you know. So that's long answer, but that's that's what we're trying to do. Well, I think, first of all, I mean, the big goals would be, you know, eradicating veteran suicide, eradicating veteran homelessness. But I know my my perspective in my life is if I can help one person with something, then I've like making progress. And so yeah. if you help one person, it's going to turn into two, it's going to turn into five. And, you know, maybe in 10, 20 years, you have programs across the country that are making that happen on a larger scale, but nobody starts at Rome, right? <laughs> oh, exactly. Exactly. And that's how it is. That's how we feel. It's like, if we can just get a couple people, you know, and, and let that domino effect happen and making a change in someone's life is the most rewarding thing that, you know, I've ever experienced. So. Yeah, I agree. Um, curiosity. Do you feel like, cause you said like, after you got out of the military, you had to figure out how to have jobs for insurance. There's probably other things like um, like housing. You don't have access to just <laughs> yeah. having something available. Um, so in your transition to civilian life, do you feel like, because this is what popped up in my head, do you feel like you almost entered into like the traditional adulthood later? Because like you definitely had to deal with adult things in the military. <laughs> But like the things that most civilian people, whether they go into the workforce or to college, like those are the things that they're figuring out mm -hmm. that they have, they have to figure out how to do that at between like the ages of 18 and 25. Yeah, no, I totally get what you're saying. Um, And then if you got out a couple of years ago, I can't remember how old you are, but like <laughs> late 20s, maybe. I am in my late twenties. Yes, <laughs> I know you're younger than me. That's what I know. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so for your question, that's a good one, right? Because I've actually thought about that myself um, when I was getting out and kind of doing doing those things. Um, I think those things, you know, you come out of it, whether you did only a couple years, whether you retire, you know, whatever. Um, it just, it's a very hard transition to like explain, but I don't think those things specifically are hard in themselves. Like obviously people struggle, right? They're, they're hard topics, but it's everything compiled in one thing, right? You're, you're leaving in, you know, you're leaving an income, you're leaving all that, you know, those safety blankets and stuff like that. And I think that's where the hard part really comes in. I'm telling you, it's like that mental of like, holy crap, this is, this is the, you know, the world and this is how I have to deal with it, what I have to do, you know, and in taking those steps of, you know, doing insurance and doing all those things, yeah, they're easy. But when you're stressed, when you feel alone on top of those things makes it hard, you know? And I think that's where like the real struggle is, is maybe not all like the little things of like finding a job and stuff. It's that stressor that comes with it all and just feeling like, even when I left like I don't know it was it's a lot and I'm still I'm still a reservist right so I'm not fully out but so I still have some connection to it but not wearing a uniform anymore not doing all these things and being around all these people that's the really really hard part and I think that makes all those other things 10 times harder so yeah I feel like so I left I mean we met when I worked at the Y and when I left my job there I was so scared because I was like, my entire social life is there. All of my friends are there. Like, I can't just pop into their office to have a conversation anymore. Like, yeah, like it's this feeling of loneliness and like trying to figure out like, how am I supposed to rebuild my life when I put so much of who I am into what I do, but like amplified because what you do is on a much larger scale and a much like the air force is much larger than the Cheyenne family YMCA (laughs) but it's no it's it's a still still similar situation right like you kind of you grow that family that bond and it's almost like like you identify as that right that's that's who I am that's what I what I do you know I mean every even just getting out and everybody kind of um like looks up to you a little bit when you're in like a lot of my family have done that in um different titles that I've had like within the military and stuff and you're always like chasing different things you're you know you can get awards do all these things there's always something to to achieve in the military so it's like it's very rewarding but it also like you have that title and when it's when you don't have it anymore it's super hard like it's really really hard I don't know it's hard to explain I just so weird so how do you feel like so do you feel like that had any any part of like when you're okay let me see if I can make this thought <laughs> coherent <laughs> um like trying to find your new identity because so back to the life coaching I found life coaching because I promised a friend like someone convinced me to leave the why because it was killing me Um, and they were like, there's another, there has to be another way for you to make an impact on the world. So like I did research and whatever, and that's one of the things I found. And I was like, okay, this is a way for me. Cause for me, it's always been about impact, about service. And that's one of the things that, um, I kind of hear you talk about when you talk about the military, it's a service, right? Um, so when you don't have that service built in anymore, And then you have to like redefine your identity and like, how am I going to serve one? But then you have to like, you have to do it alone. Like you have have to be like, okay, how? So like for you, you found a way to help people through providing insurance and helping them secure their lives, like financially and whatever. And we can talk about that more too. Um, And then the life coaching and helping them, you know, find themselves a little bit and achieve their goals do you feel like those are the kind of things that led you to that is finding like that search for your new identity or like the search for something you put your own signature on 
Yeah, it was kind of like, I think that's what um what locked me in, right? And what drew me there um, was, was those things. You know, service is such a big thing. And there's a thousand different ways, you know, crazy, crazy amount of different ways you can serve, right? And there's all different people who do serve. So even just talking like this, like, there there's so many different ways like i mean not even just military i'm talking like all all different ways right so i'm sure a lot of people go through the same experiences too and and have those struggles um but that's what definitely led me um on the path i'm on now and of course i have days where i'm like you know you you sit back and you wonder it's like did i make the right decisions you know and is this feeling going to last forever you know and stuff like that but i'll tell you i have always wanted my own businesses um like I I kind of like that's another thing I'm like super drawn to um so like tying them getting to tie both things together was something that was like it's almost like a light bulb went off when I found the the uh the life coaching thing um I was like wow this is everything I want in in one thing so um it's super exciting and uh we're we're really pumped about it so see where it goes Nice. I'm excited to see uh, the progress in that as it goes on. How are you feeling about becoming a mom? Mm, good question. Good <laughs> question. Look at you coaching. Um, I am crazy excited. So I feel like my whole life, honestly, I've, even though I like, I obviously don't have, I don't, I'm pregnant now but like you know doing all the things I've done in my lifetime um leaving you know home at 18 and and doing all this stuff everything like in the back of my mind it was like I'm doing it for my kids my future kids one day right because obviously I don't have any but um it's always future kids future kids like I gotta make sure I'm good I want to you know teach them all these things and and show them all the experiences that I've gone through and really have like a lot of um experience to just bring back to them and hopefully raise them the best I can you know um but I'm really excited so it's just crazy that it's actually happening sometimes I'm like I can't believe it (laughs) and then I like look down on my stomach and I'm like yep it's happening (laughs) (laughs) so it's crazy um but I'm really really thrilled um we're having a baby girl originally we wanted a baby boy and that was another thing I was like kind of bummed out (laughs) Um, which, you know, changes and then you have to like kind of change your perspective. Like, okay, what is that going to look like? You know, being a, a girl mom. And then now I'm just super pumped. So I'm going to ask, what was it about a boy that made you want to have a boy? Um, I feel like if anybody knows me, um, they'd be like, yeah, you're probably, like, they probably would picture me as a, as a boy mom, right? Because, you know, I, I was a tomboy growing up as a kid, um, you know, played baseball, done all these sports and done all these things. So kind of in my head, like I, I, you know, we ride dirt bikes and just I'm always kind of into it, right? Um, So in my head, I was like, oh, God, a, like, a little baby boy would be just awesome to have. We could, you know, put him in all these sports and get him into motocross or do all these things. But then I was like, I'm just gonna have this little girl that is gonna be I don't know if I could swear on here but a little badass yeah (laughs) (laughs) you know and that's what I'm that's my plan for her is you know she can do anything she wants to do and and be just like the boys if that's what she wants to do but um that's kind of where it came from I think and just the mom mom and son relationship that you know you see you grew up with you know how it is in comparison to like you know the the females and in the dads so I think I was like oh you know I really really want like a little boy but one day hopefully hopefully I mean I feel like so when my let's see I was at the the what is gender reveal for my second niece before I knew she was a niece and (laughs) why do you say it like that gender reveal because because I don't believe in gender reveals. I'm just like, why do we have to have another party? I'm not, it's just, 
like that that's where I'm just like can we <laughs> what happened to just finding out when you're in the like <laughs> like <Yeah>. oh hey <laughs> I don't know I get you um, I think people go over the top with parties that's what I think <laughs> um, for my personal liking <laughs> um, but I'm also a person that like my baby showers I planned them and I was like hey guys we're gonna have a barbecue bring me stuff I need to keep my baby alive thanks <laughs> so, um yeah I'm not a baby game person I'm not like I've gone to my friend's baby showers and they're like are you gonna participate I'm like mm, do I have to <laughs> yeah and that was another weird thing too like you know getting pregnant you you don't know anything like you just have yeah. to figure it out along the way and that was another thing I'm like do I plan that am I supposed to plan that and then my friends are like no normally someone plans it for you yeah and I'm such a control freak I'm like all right mom what are you gonna do <laughs> where are you gonna put it so that's another challenge too that we we were kind of going through a little bit but I'm excited about it we'll see what happens but I'm the same way like you like I was like, I don't want it to be cheesy and boring and I don't, that's what I don't want. So make it fun and then that's it. Yeah, I conveniently have a mom who hates planning parties. So she was just like, I'll pay for stuff. And I was like, sweet, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> but like, I just remember, so like we found out with my oldest, Sebastian, who's gonna have a boy. And okay, hold on. I need to go back to the original thought I was having. But at that gender reveal, like they found out that she was going to be a girl and my brother's mother-in-law said something to me. She was, and she was like, Oh, but you're like, you're, you're, you're really a boy mom. And I like, at first I was like, is that a compliment or like not a compliment? I'm not really sure. Um, but I think really what it comes down to is like, my older brother has two girls and he lets them paint their fingernails or his fingernails and he'll like dress up with them and do whatever oh yeah and doesn't matter I like they're like auntie Chandra can I paint your nails I'm like please don't <laughs> like I don't want yeah. that on me like I will do yep. other things <laughs> like, yeah will... and that's how I feel yeah so it was like I was I didn't find out with Baxter and I was so nervous that he would be a girl because I was like, I don't know what to do with a girl. I also was a tomboy. I like, and people said to me, they were like, well, you have to find out because like, you need to be prepared. I was like, let's be honest. If it's a girl, I'm going to still put her in the onesies with dinosaurs and robots. And maybe I'll like make a matching tutu to put on her so that like, <laughs> you're like, it's a girl, <laughs> but that's how also, I feel too. Yeah. Like it's, and it's so hard. Cause then there's the the societal norms that before you have kids you have that so you're like I want a boy because you know sports and we like to do outdoorsy things and then that realization that like I'm a girl I did all those things so if I have a girl she can do all those things too yeah for me it's the other side because like my my youngest is like I'll go with very emotional he's like a natural empath and he loves stuffies and he likes to play dress up and he likes like all sorts of things and like there's parts of me that was like you should be more rough and tumble sometimes and then there's parts of me that are like I mean you're taping one stuffed animal to the other stuffed animal and like pretending it's a rocket launcher while <laughs> making war but then also want a rainbow unicorn for Christmas. So like, I feel like there's a pretty fair balance. Like you do what you want to do, kid. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> That's too funny. <sighs> Kids are weird. They're weird. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that's how I feel right now. It's like, I don't know what she's look going to look like. I don't know how she's going to be. Like, I hope she's like, you know, cool and fun and wants to do the things that I, you know, like and that kind of thing, you know? So I'm going to warn you. Oh, gosh. <laughs> she's not. I mean, she might, but she's probably not. <sighs> like, that that amount of... And I had John Rodell on here, who's a writer. He was my last episode, actually. And one of the things he said was, like, the 
best parenting advice is just don't take anything personally. And it was just mind blowing to me because it's like, it's so true because I love lots and lots of sports and Sebastian loves soccer and soccer is not my jam. And I have had to learn to love soccer because (laughs) it's his life and he gets to be a soccer player if he wants to. And like, I can't make him play basketball or football or whatever. I mean, I could, but we would all be a lot less happy about life. Um, (laughs) But it's that like, but I think that's also the, one of the greatest benefits of being a parent is getting to know your kid as they grow up because there's going to be parts where you're like oh that part is me it's usually going to be the parts where when your kid is annoying you you're like why do you have to have my most annoying traits (laughs) couldn't you have done something else (laughs) um but there's definitely parts where it's going to be the same and you're going to have things in common and but then there's going to be those parts where like they're setting off on their own and you're going to be like I don't know I don't know how like I and I think part for me it's like I don't know how to help you with this. Like, yeah. You have, you have to do that on your own. Like I have the soccer skill of a five-year-old. I can't help <laughs> you with competitive soccer. I can't. Sorry. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I actually see that with my parents right now. Um, with what I'm dealing with right now, like they love me being in the military and, and doing all these things. And, you know, I've always just been like, go, go, go and doing this, doing that. Um, always something for them to like, you know, be proud of and, and talk about. And then, this stuff they're like they don't really understand when I was trying to like explain Mm -hmm. they're they're like you're you're gonna be like a coach is like is that like a therapist what what are you doing I don't understand and I'm like no no it's not (laughs) so I've definitely seen a little bit of that too like even with like while I'm you know I'm grown doing my own thing my parents are still like huh you know what do you what do you I guess I I think you'll do you you're gonna do great but it's just not it's not their vibe type thing so um but it is funny that you were talking about that because I definitely see that too but I don't know we'll see we'll see how she is I'm excited May can't come soon enough (laughs) (laughs) at least it's gonna be before summer summer babies are the worst summer babies aren't the worst summer pregnancies are the worst yeah yeah I was uh I was hoping to not have (laughs) It's kind of funny <laughs> when we were like, cause obviously this was, this was pretty planned um, for the most part, but I told my husband, like, I don't want a Gemini cause you're a Gemini <laughs> and my mom's a Gemini and I have a bunch of Geminis all around me. I'm like, I don't want a Gemini. And you know, we found out uh, her, her date of birth and I was like, yes, she's not going to be a Gemini. So May, so is she going to like fall under Taurus? I don't know how far into May Taurus goes. Uh, I know early May is Taurus. I don't know. I mean, we'll see because she's due the seventeenth. But you know, I mean, with babies, who knows when when she'll sure. actually be here? But this is my favorite. Okay, favorite game that my my friend just had her first baby, and I went to her baby shower months ago, and they did like a put your bet on what day the kid is going to get here, and yeah. I was just like asking her husband I'm like were you late were you early what about your mom like what did you do like ask all these questions everyone else is just like just pick a date I was right so were you nailed it exactly no way. Like, she, asked me, she was like heading to the hospital now you win and I was like yes <laughs> wow well you should come fly out here check out New Hampshire and come to the baby shower <laughs> and you could pick my date that way I know <laughs> pick it out I'll take it off dated because that's how I roll <laughs> I don't just, I don't just make wild guesses. That's not like, I, I always tell people that every spontaneous thing I've ever done has been meticulously planned out beforehand. Like I just have like a file of spontaneous things I want to do someday. And then as soon as the moment hits where I'm like, this fits, I like take it, like, bam, play that card. And everyone's like, oh my God, you're so spontaneous. And I'm like, yes, here's the itinerary. (laughs) That's too funny. (laughs) I kind of feel the same way. Like I have like you know similar like brain as you like you know when it comes to that kind of stuff but I'll tell you being pregnant 
that my memory and th- that's real that it is 110 percent real i thought people were bullshitting i was like yeah yeah whatever i may forget here and there because i already do that sometimes but yeah. oh no it's horribly real <laughs> you want the bad news oh no seven years what seven years postpartum especially new studies are showing so mom brain but then the whole postpartum, like your hormones, your like body, like things don't get back to who you were before being pregnant, seven years. And that's for every kid. So however many you're planning on having, like I literally, my kid, is, my youngest is eight. I have been me again for a year. No like, way. Yes. <laughs> oh no. Nobody told me that before I signed up for this. <laughs> If you want all of the dark sides of of pregnancy and being a mom, I sadistically will tell you. Like anyone who, any of my friends who have been like, I want to have a kid. I'm like, okay, these are the things they're not going to tell you. Yes, it's beautiful. Yes, it's a miracle. Yes, it's all of these things. Also, be prepared for all of these things. Um, because it's not a walk in a park, in the walk, walk in the park. But I think that's also one of the things that makes it so rewarding. Yeah, no, exactly. And I mean, I'm excited either way, but uh, to be honest, like our life already is chaos because, and I I do it to myself. Like if anybody, if you, if you talk to anybody that like is around here and knows what's going on in my life, they're like, they're nuts. We we're always doing this. We're always doing that. I barely have any free time and we're always running around. And then now we're going to throw, you know, this this mix of a uh, of a baby in and I don't even know how we're gonna do it but we're gonna do it <laughs> I suggest one of those fabric wearable things they're way more comfortable for for me than like the backpack things that you put a baby in but like just just wear them around get, okay. get your shit done <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna have to YouTube that I don't know how to wrap it around my body like you see that some of those it's, people it's okay. have I know I learned on YouTube it's that's what YouTube's for (laughs) but like you do it a couple times and then like you're you know exactly what to do and it's just like second nature so but yeah I know to each their own but I thought the the wearable like fabric thing was way more comfortable than like a baby Bjorn I don't know if there's other things that have a different name but yeah yeah plus just bonding with your kid because they're with you and all these great things <laughs> all these great things but also your hands are free to get yeah. shit done. well that's the plan I mean I still want to do a lot of things because it's also really weird for me right now because I I can't do a lot of the things that I want to do like I'm not allowed to go snowboarding I'm not allowed <laughs> to use you know ride my dirt bike or go do just these crazy things like we just recently not long ago before I was pregnant we got into um, downhill mountain biking which is super dangerous yeah. <laughs> and wild but like I would love that and at some point I mean I don't take her on like the hard crazy things but like I'm so excited to get her into like some of that kind of stuff and hopefully she rocks it out you know yeah <laughs> um on a similar note I I was telling my boyfriend about like things coming up. So like Baxter's basketball just started, which I'm coaching and then volleyball starts, which I'm playing. And then all of these other events I'm doing. And he's just like, are you ever going to have a day where you just do nothing? And I was like, I mean, I don't, I don't plan on doing much at my funeral. So like, (laughs) so true. Pencil that in. But until then, yeah, I don't plan on, I don't plan on slowing down because this is the only time I've got. Yeah, and that's how I feel. And that's another thing with the life coaching. Like, I feel like so many people, like, don't reach their full potential, whether they don't have enough, like, experience or knowledge or or drive or confidence to to do it. You know what I mean? And I think the confidence is a big part of it. And hopefully, like, I can help some people because I've done, I've done, like, you know, you know, being humble about it. I've done a lot in my, in my lifetime for, for my age range and stuff. And I, I have all these other plans. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. Um, I have, <laughs> those are my reminders because I forget everything. Um, but I have so many other plans like in my life and I'm like super ambitious and ready to go. And 
like I want to be that person that like really helps other people get there because sometimes it's just like you need you need a little helping hand I know I know for sure I do but thank god I you know my husband has been great and being that that person for me so I think and I mean I've come to this conclusion I've said on here a lot um I have this weird space in my brain where like I have this really pure belief in humanity but I also think that humanity is a dumpster fire so like there's always this juxtaposition (laughs) but it's the the community building for me and um just I don't know where this where this thought was going it was it's I lost it but um yeah there's there's so much impact that can be made on the world and on individuals and I think the more people we have and I'm one of those I'm like a firm believer that nobody's my competition like you're a life coach I'm a life coach I have I'm not like oh my god she's gonna steal my clients this is gonna be terrible no because one we're we're in completely different places concerned (laughs) serving different people but I think if we all focus on the betterment of the world, like we have that power in us as humans to make this place not a dumpster fire. We just have to do it. But I think that like those little steps of helping individuals reach their confidence and take that step to whether it's start their own business or, um, commit to a relationship or commit to leaving a relationship or like there's so many things that people can do that are can be like relatively tiny that have such a huge impact on their lives and then if one person becomes a happier healthier person everyone that they interact with becomes happier and healthier and then it just spreads and then the world becomes a happier place and um then so many problems get solved or at least start getting solved. And I think that's, and starting, I think is so hard for most people. Yeah. Because starting is where failure comes in and everyone's so afraid of failure. Yeah. Yeah. And leaving, that's a big part of it too, is, is that comfort zone, right? Like Mm -hmm. so many people, like, I mean, I see so many, so much potential even around me, like with people, you know, that I'm involved with and stuff. And sometimes like, you can do so much more you know and it's it's so crazy um because being a life coach a lot of people think um that there's you know the coach is supposed to just give you all the answers right right that's not what it is it's not at all which is cool and that's like the best part for me about it yeah I you know I dabble in like giving some advice or you know sharing some shared experiences and different stuff like that and that's what makes me you know, an individual life coach of, if you're coached with me, you know what I mean? But it's, it's really all about getting that person there and they do it themselves. We just guide them. Right. That is, I think that's the most brilliant part is that everybody has the answers within themselves. Like the job of a life coach is to help you realize those answers. Yeah, exactly. And change that mindset that you need and, you know, just be that, that guide you know because I mean I've hit in life like definitely hit some brick walls where I was like I don't know what's up down sideways left right where to go how how to get out of this you know this hole and it's like that's what it's all about is you know having a good community and a lot of people don't have that anymore like you don't see a lot of mentors and even friends wise like finding like some really good people that really really care about you is hard And it's hard for, you know, and and a lot of people are just so busy with their lives, selfish, whatever the case may be, Um, not to sit here and hate on it, anybody, but, you know, everybody's so busy and, you know, the way, the way life is, a lot of people don't even see each other anymore. So it's really, really hard, I think, to find that within your own, like, little community of, like, people that are push each other and people that motivate you and keep you on track and can give you, like, different advice, so... Um, that's another big part of it for me. So I thought of a question. Um, 
I want you to think back to any point in time where you feel like you had what you call a comfort zone. So ponder for a moment. Okay. <laughs> like fi find that point in time. You're like, this was comfortable. This was my comfort zone. And then like, when you really look at it, how, how comfortable was it? Hmm. So this is kind of a hard question because to be honest with you, with like what I've done in my life and being in the military, you move around so much. It's really right. hard to like stay in one place and be be super comfortable. Um, I've definitely had um comfort within jobs. Um I'd say being there for a good amount of time, you're you're pretty comfortable. I felt I felt really comfortable. Um because what I'm comparing it to is, you know, when I do step out of that comfort zone and you start something new or, you know, you ha even have ideas to start something new. It's that that anxiety. It's like nervous and it, you feel alive, you know? Yeah. That's how I feel about it. Like the, the comfort zone is definitely it's so comfortable that it's like. Like I'm just. Barely living, you know. Right. OK, so this is why I had the question, because my brain was like. I don't, I don't remember when you were talking about the comfort zone. That was the thing that came up in my brain. I was just like, I feel like if I really, like if I actually spent the time and looked at all of those times where I was like, I'm really comfortable here. If I actually went through and be like, how did I feel on a day-to-day -day basis? How was I getting through life? And like, look at that and like individually look at those things and those data points and be like, would I call this thing comfortable? And like, for the most part, the answer would be no. Like for the most part, all the places where I feel like I've been comfortable, if I actually analyze them, I'd be like, oh, I was actually just like trying to get through the discomfort as quickly as possible so that and like doing the same thing every day. Yeah. And like, yeah. just, I mean, anytime, and there's been multiple times in my life where it's just like, I just have to make it through the next day. If I can just make it, if I can just make it through that meeting on Friday, if I can just make it through, um, the, the end of the season for the kids sports, like whatever it is, like there've been times where I'm just like, if I can just get to this point, I'm going to be okay. If I can just get to this point, I'm going to be okay. And then I think about it and I'm just like, I don't know if I would define that as comfort. And so the idea of a comfort zone, I think if most of us like sat down and picked it apart we would realize how uncomfortable that like I don't even want to say routine because I do love routine but like almost stagnancy yeah is mm -hmm. you're right no for sure that's a really good way to put it um definitely a different perspective to like look at it with um I never really put thought into it like that that's good that's well, really good because I agree with you like it's more like you can almost name it something else at that point you know the comfort zone is is that place where you're just getting by and it's yeah. not comfortable because it's not enjoyable it's not happiness it's just you're just there you know yeah the stagnant zone it's how it feels I hate I hate how that feels it's the worst that's why everybody always thinks I'm nuts because I'm always doing something and trying to stay busy and trying to just live the best life I can in the amount of time that I have you know and it, you know it's so cliche like you only have one life you know you only have this amount of time and it's just that's the truth like you you got one shot and yeah. I'd like to, to leave a little bit of a mark me whether it's big or small at least like making an impact on, on even a few people, you know? Well, I'll tell you right now, you've at least accomplished that with me. So <laughs> you've made a mark on me. Um, right back so. at you. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Okay. Um, we're going to move into our game of random questions. There's three. You get to answer them first. Of course. Um, the first one is what do you watch most on YouTube? What do I watch most on YouTube? Well, I'm sure everybody knows 
<laughs> YouTube can be like a black hole. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, I'll end up, I'll look at like music videos or, you know, whatever. I don't do it very often, to be honest. I try to like stay off my phone as much as I can. Um, like I hate the thing. I just want to get a flip phone again. Um, but I'd never be able to get anywhere because I need my GPS. <laughs> but uh, no, so uh, nothing really specific. I'd say I just sometimes I end up in like that that black hole of like this video and then this next recommended video or just random videos that pop up next. I'll just I'll end up watching from something like music videos to like random animals or whatever the case is. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I think one of the only things that I intentionally watch, I mean, other than like, how do I fix this thing is, <laughs> yeah. um, I really like this channel called Jubilee. Um, they do like, they have one thing called like middle ground where people have conversations where like on opposing sides of things, they have conversations, um, or spectrum where people are on a different spectrum of things. They have conversations. I know it's crazy if anyone's ever, you know, watched this, that I like watching people have conversations. Um, <laughs> cause that's like my thing. Um, but yeah, I like that a lot. And that's most of the things that I like actually seek out on YouTube. Um, every once in a while, someone will show me like a funny animal video I'm just like oh that's cool but like I don't watch a lot on YouTube it's not my jam yeah a lot oh. of it is true like when you're like how do I fix this a lot of mine is um I have I got chickens this year well 2023 yeah I have 10 chickens and two ducks and I have a dog and two cats so my life's crazy but I got those so I'll like look up chicken things and different things on how to do stuff so that's a new adventure as well that I threw on my plate that is just a lot. Yeah. <laughs> the amount of times that like our animal shelter was just like, we're having a sale right now. And I'm like, do I need another living animal that depends on me to exist? It is exactly. the thing I need to do at this point in my life. 100%. We have two dogs. So I live with my mom and my little brother and my kids. We all moved in together and we have two dogs and a cat. And then there was this lab puppy like big puppy it's probably like six months old um running around the neighborhood that we took to the shelter and my brother and I fell in love with him so we've spent the last and he's still at the shelter so we were like trying to convince my mom that we need another dog and she's like absolutely not so now we're trying to convince my brother's friend who lives out on a ranch that they need another dog <laughs> Oh, thank God I don't live near you. Oh, goodness. I'm so bad. Adopt, I named him Steve because um, <laughs> he looks like a Steve. And I had a dog named Steve once that I didn't get to keep for a very long time. Um, mm -hmm. And so I was just like, this is the reincar reincarnation of Steve. Um, <laughs> but yeah, because he was just, he was just so sweet. Um, and I can't believe like he, he had to have had owners because like he was well-groomed. Like he smelled like he was recently bathed. When you said sit, he sat, but he was definitely like puppy energy, but no one's claimed him. And it just oh. makes me so sad. Yeah. I want goats. I want pigs. I want all the things, but my husband is like, relax yourself. We have a kid and we don't know what we're doing. So <laughs> I have to wait till the kid is old enough to help with chores. That's the key. That's the plan. Yeah, that's the plan. She's gonna have she's gonna have lots of lots of uh different chores because she's gonna keep up with all my hobbies and all my all my adventures. We're gonna have lots of animals, so <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Okay. If a clairvoyant could tell you how you die and when, would you want to know or not? Oh, these are I like that question. Oh uh... no. I don't want to know. No, no way. No way. Because then you live your life like knowing when. I mean, what if it's like in a week? I would freak yeah. out, you know, and like, no, I, I wouldn't want to know. And the same way, because I feel like. In my brain, the only two options would be, OK, I have to live my life like I'm dying, like every single day or 
give up because I'm like, because I find out it's tomorrow at noon. I'm like, I can't get anything done in that time. Like, can't even book anything I want to do in that time. Yeah, um, exactly. So for me, it's just not live each day like it's my last, but live each day as if if this were my last day, I would still be proud for how far I've come in this time. So, but yeah, I don't want to know. Absolutely sure. not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last one. If you could anonymously report a friend that texted regularly while driving, would you report them? If, uh, no. Well, I mean, I could do that now. You can anonymously do anything. I mean, I definitely, I am a firm non-texting and driving um you know working in in some law enforcement before and stuff like that uh not a fan I have seen horrible things and it is just not worth it it is not worth it it's not I mean I definitely use my phone like to I'll call and I'll talk to people while I'm driving and stuff totally fine that hands-free rule though it's just it's crazy. Um, I've just, I've seen, seen a lot of stuff. Um, and yeah, even though I, but I still wouldn't like go report my friend, but I just, I would probably, Hey, you know, chill out. Yeah. I'm first of all, if I'm in the car, it's not a report. Like there have been times where my boyfriend will be driving and he'll like, he'll get a text and he'll like pick it up. And I'm just like, no, absolutely not. This is my life. Like you, you watch the road. Um, yeah. if I need to send a text and there's someone in the car, I hand my phone to them and I'm like, this is what you're going to say. And then I just have to trust that they're not making me sound like a jackass to whoever I'm texting. Um, cause sometimes it's my little brother and you like, you never know. Um, <laughs> and that's, a, that's another thing. All sorts of ideas. It's like, it drives me crazy that how the world is nowadays, right? Mm-hmm. You like say, even if you're driving for an hour or whatever, people cannot be you know separated from the the connections they have in their phone for that m- amount of time without like losing it like oh, mm-hmm. oh someone someone's like texting me or or they like this picture or they did what or they sent me like a video it's like it's almost crazy the addiction that i yeah. have seen with cell phones don't get me wrong like i catch myself and i'm like wow i've been scrolling for a hot minute you know and it, it is what it is but to see like the connection with people's cell phones it blows my mind honestly and it's it's really sad it is yeah I like and there okay so I had to get a new phone this last year because when I was in Boston someone stole my phone um you're in Boston and, you didn't even tell me what the heck I, okay so this is how it worked <laughs> my friend called me on Thursday night and said, hey, I have an extra ticket to a concert next week in Boston. I will pay for half your plane ticket, hotels paid for, concerts paid for, will you come out to Boston? And I went into the room and I was like, mom, it is the week before school starts and she's a teacher. And like, I would be scheduled to get back on Tuesday and school starts on Wednesday. like." Can you keep my kids alive so I can go to Boston where you've been wanting to go for your entire life? (laughs) And can I go do this? Because it's going to cost me $150 plus buying food. And she was like, absolutely, you have to go. So then within a week, so like I got asked on Thursday. By Friday, I bought plane tickets. I flew out like Wednesday of the next week. And then on a red eye and then flew back on Tuesday. And Mm -hmm. so like, there wasn't a lot of planning involved. (laughs) (laughs) Good excuse. I'll take it. That's fine. But I plan on going out with my mom at some point in the next, we'll say year. Because she actually wants to go to Boston. And so when I actually plan it, I will let you know. Yeah, no, let me know. And I got to. I want to show my husband, you know, Wyoming and Colorado and all that at some point too. So we'll be, we'll be out that way at some point, whenever that happens. Life takes so much planning, especially when you have to go like more than a mile away from your house. (laughs) Yeah, it does. There's not enough time in the day, I feel. I agree. 
All right, I have one last question for you. If there's one thing the world needs to know, what is it? Oh, it's such a good question. There's so much, I feel. I mean, one thing the world needs to know. Um, I'd say, I mean, everybody knows it, but no one really implements things like just be kind, you know, that's, I, I feel like there's a thousand things to say in this moment for this, you know, question, yeah. but it's like, just be kind and, and be, try to be a good person, you know, like in every aspect of your life. And it's going to take you so far, like in all your relationships and, you know, even with your job and stuff like that, if you really just trying to be a genuine human being, you, you're going to be someone and you're going to go somewhere, you know, and I think it's important. So I like that. Like I like that a lot. <laughs> I agree. Well, Kaylee, thank you very much for joining me on the Common Humanity podcast and having a real human conversation with me. Until next time. <laughs>